I forgot to add to my last weekly roundup the uh, the outcome of of the roadworks outside my house. So they turned up with I think there were three vehicles. Two had traffic lights, those mobile traffic lights on them, and there were like seven or eight workmen all milling around and they came and they started digging up the concrete on the squares where um, the man a couple of weeks ago come around and, and spray painted the squares. So they started digging up the concrete. Well, one man started digging up the concrete. Another man came along with some tarmac, threw it in the holes and another man came along with a little roller and rolled it all in and an hour and a half later they were gone. I don't know why there were so many vehicles here. They were here for, they were actually working for probably less than an hour and mostly talking. And that was it, they were gone. So now we have some tarmac halves. And it's just what you would expect from, like what we get from roadworks in this country now, that they come around and they fill a hole with a bit of tarmac and they go again. I'm wondering how long it will last we have patchwork roads in most places now where they just come along and fill a bit in and then they go. Um, so I thought I'd start by <laughs> resolving that one for you because I realised after I'd uploaded the last video that I hadn't finished off the uh, that's, that section about the road work. So um, if you were waiting on tender hooks for what happened in the end, then here it is. I own one pair of leggings which I use for hiking. They're the Capri ones, so they come halfway down the calf, so they're really nice for really hot days. But these need a bit of repair. You can see I've repaired them before because I just used the thread that was already in the machine. So they're repaired in orange, but what's happening is that you now I'm wearing them out on hikes, they're not really up to the job. So I'm just going to try and show you that you can see this there are holes appearing where the fabric's wearing. So I'm going to sew these up once more. I'm going to sew further in the line and then I'm going to overlock them as well. And that's just to keep them going as long as possible. Uh, but I also went up the road to my local Poundland just to see what they have because I bought a pair of um, like cut off joggers up there for six quid earlier this year and they're still fine so I thought I'll go have a look and see if they do any like, leggings and guess what they do they do uh, they call it a, a seventh seven of an eighth length so it comes up just above the ankle but there's enough giving them so that they roll so I can turn the cuffs up these are the cheap um, it actually says it's Beloved label. I thought it was Pepco, but it's not. And um, they're three quid. So I bought two pairs. And I had been looking on Vinted, and I found four or five pairs on Vinted for £1.50. But the problem is that by the time you've added the postage and the um, the protection cost and all that sort of thing, you might as well have paid three quid. So if you're struggling to sell stuff on Vinted and you're putting it up really, really cheap and you don't know why people aren't buying it, this is why it's because of places like Poundland. So I'm going to use these this year. They should probably last, but I may well end up buying a few pairs on Vinted if I'm feeling in the mood um, because I like to buy the pre-love stuff and I like to keep things... Um, just keep things being circulated. I should have bought them on there, but at the moment I'm being a little bit cautious. Um, you know, I'm not exactly flush with money. Got to buy your cheap stuff where you can get it. And these will be worn until they fall to bits. This isn't a buy and wear once thing. This is a buy and wear it until I've repaired it about eight times probably. So, uh, oh, and I also bought, they had loads of those um, trainer socks which are perfect for my new sketches, and I've only got one pair. Uh, and this is a pack of five for two quid. And again, they'll probably last me forever. 
So that's what I've spent today. And now I have extra trousers. I'm going to go and repair that other pair. And it means that, you know, now I've, I've got three pairs. I don't have to rush home and make sure that they're washed straight away because I'll need it for the next time. I thought we'd have a quick look at my July food spend just to see what I have bought and what I have saved. So, if so there's a whole bunch of different numbers here, so I'll talk you through it if you haven't already seen this. So my prediction, which is if I had bought everything at full shelf price, I would have spent £86.17. I saved £36.56 by buying yellow stickers and I made £10.20 back on cashback apps by picking up things that were for free. Um, and getting reimbursed through the apps. My actual physical spend, and by that I mean that's the food I've physically eaten this month, came to a value of £12.59. So there are a couple of reasons for this. One is that a lot of what I buy now I get using Nectar Points, and I use two survey sites that only pay in Nectar Points. So if I'm short of foods that I can't get on yellow sticker, I go to Sainsbury's and I buy them on Nectar Points, which effectively means the food is free. So I tend not to pay anything for food in Sainsbury's anymore. But I use that as an emergency backup. I like to have that amount of money put aside in my Nectar Points. I mean, I can't cash it out anyway. So I'd have to spend it in Sainsbury's. But it means that... If there's a week or even two weeks where I see no veg going cheap in Morrison's, I could go down to Sainsbury's and top up that way. And I have done that this month. But because that comes in as a zero figure, it doesn't count on the actual spend. That's what the prediction is about. The £86.17 is if I had bought everything at full price. The other thing is that I only count foods that I have eaten or opened. So a lot of what I buy, I roll on to future months. So if I've bought like four broccolis, three of them will get blanched and I'll put them in the freezer. And then each month when I use a broccoli, it comes off the budget for the next month. So a lot of food ends up in the freezer or ends up as cupboard food for emergencies. So that's the value of my physical spend on food this month and that is a lot better than it has been in the past so if I just have a quick look at my monthly spend for this year my average monthly food spend this year has been a lot higher than last year so it's been averaging about 25 pounds give or take so that 12 pound 59 uh, is it 12 pound 59 uh, yeah 12 pound 59 is a lot cheaper than my all my previous months except for March when I spent £15.77 and that's because I was away at my parents for two weeks so last year in total I had a I had a food spend of £120.29 which again is because that's what I physically ate and a lot of stuff got rolled over so that means that my 20 23 food spend average per month was £10 and at the moment my 2024 spend is averaging £33 a month it's a lot more so I spent £120.29 last year so far this year alone I've spent £168 and a lot of that will be because and this is why I've stopped buying all the ultra processed rubbish is a lot of that stuff gets remaindered more than veg and I've been buying way too much processed bread, cake, things like that so that's another reason why I've stopped buying all that because it's a waste of money I don't need that stuff in my diet um, and the other reason is that there just aren't as many yellow stickers as there used to be and the price of them has gone up because they are 
a percentage price of the full price. So when the full price goes up, the yellow sticker price goes up. And that's why it's such a big difference. So at the moment, that difference is massive. That difference between £10 a month and £33 a month is huge in terms of food spend. I know that it doesn't look like a lot of money being spent on food across a year, but I have always eaten on a, a yellow sticker budget because it suits me. You know, I'm one person. How much food do you actually need to eat? I home cook everything. I make a lot of things from scratch. Um, so I don't buy a lot of pre-prepared stuff anyway. I just need all the veggies. Uh, I just need the meat products some dairy products and I'm good to go really. And I can do everything else from scratch. I just got really lazy last year and I let my eating get out of control. I'm just eating loads of rubbish, snacking, grazing too much. And I knew that yes, this year I had to do something about it. So really in June is when that started. So that's what I've physically eaten in terms of food this month for July is £12.59. If I can keep that going for the rest of the year, I've got a nice rollover between the Sainsbury's Nectar points that I'm earning. And I'm earning quite a few of those at the moment. I think I've got about... Eighty pounds on my nectar card at the moment in points, which um, which I just go and use to buy food if I need to. So if I can't get yellow stickers or I'm running low on something that I really need, that I can't get cheap, I will go into Sainsbury's and do that and then buy it on a yellow on um, on nectar points. Um, so between that and the yellow stickers, mostly at Morrison's and the odd gift card at Tesco's, uh, we can get this back under control. And that's a good motivation for eating less rubbish is look at the difference. I've halved my food bill from last month. I spent £30 last month and I've pretty much halved it. So that's got to be a good incentive for eating less rubbish. So that's a little update. Um, I might do one on surveys. I've had to ditch a couple of survey sites. But yeah, that's um, that's that's my food update. I think that's pretty good. Yesterday was Friday and I decided to do my second hike for this week. I did one on Monday and I did another one yesterday. All the videos coming up have come up. I don't know, wherever they are. Because um, I had a feeling that the weather was going to break. And I got home at about half past three. And then about six o'clock the heavens opened Oh my, so much rain. I think my plants are probably really happy. And it's a lot cooler now. And I think it's going to be like this for about a week. So I don't think there could be any hikes next week. Um, so I made a good decision there. So it's Saturday morning now. It's about nine o'clock. And I'm going to go off and do cleaning. Hopefully the building won't be like an oven, which is nice. Because that makes the job a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, that's... Saturday morning and the people are still out wearing t-shirts and shorts so I don't think it's that cold right let's get Saturday morning on, on with so yesterday morning Saturday I almost fell down the stairs in my flat it was really scary uh, when I first moved into my flat um, the stairs were a mess all the carpet was ripped up it was all tattered it was full of holes and literally the day I picked up the keys and went to start moving in um, there was a guy there repairing the stairs laying a new carpet and as everything with, with the flat that they, they put everything in as cheaply as possible so it's this, this really cheap horrible office carpet and all the stairs have this plastic edging which goes around the lip edge of the stair um, presumably to save wear and tear and when he put them in he said uh, he said I can't get all the screws in there's nowhere to screw the holes in because underneath I think the stairs are concrete um, and I don't know what he did I, I'm presuming he probably glued them down or something and you know for the last six and a half years since I've been here I've been waiting for an accident because some of these stair edges aren't secured properly and there's one in particular and it's now really loose and that's what I stepped on as I was going down the stairs and I stepped on it and it gave way and thankfully my feet slid out from underneath me but in front 
So I went down on my backside on the stairs and then slid down the stairs. I've bruised my arm. You can't really see it. The bruise hasn't come out, but it's really sore. So it's like it's bruised the muscle. Uh, but my backside is black and it's really painful to sit on. So I'm going to um, drop a message to my letting agency and get them to send someone round to fix it because um, as I say I've, I've, I've been waiting for an accident like this to happen but for the last six months in particular every time I've gone down the stairs I've thought be careful you're going to have a fall and yesterday I did it. It was really painful at the time. The only thing that stopped me was I grabbed the handrail, there's a handrail on the left and I grabbed that as I slid down the stairs and it stopped me. So I'd also scraped um, my leg on the corner of one of those, the edges of one of those stairs, but that doesn't seem to have come out. I think I've done so much hiking. <laughs> I've bruised my legs up so much already that it didn't even notice that. But that's weirdly sore, even though the bruise hasn't really come out there. Um, but yeah, my backside really hurts. It's absolutely black. It's horrible. Every time I sit down, it hurts. So that was my uh, that was my fun Saturday morning. <sighs> Sunday morning, and I've just come back from doing my morning clean and Morrison's. In Morrison's today, I spent five pounds thirty-five, which is quite a lot for me. Um, what did I get? We did all right. The prices weren't absolutely amazing, but. This food selection was good. So, first we have spring greens. These were 79p down to 59p. That's a good stash of greens there. Mushrooms, closed cut mushrooms were 95p down to 56p, and I bought two of those. Uh, fine beans, the fine green beans, lots of these at the moment. These were 77p down to 56p, so I bought two of those. Uh, broccoli, twin pack broccolis were 99p down to 74p and I've bought three of these because I haven't seen a lot of broccoli lately so a lot of this I'm going to blanch put in the freezer for rainy days uh, so that's that and the same with these carrots I've got some carrots at the moment that I bought last week so these were 50p down to 30p so I'm going to blanch those and put those in the freezer as well so that is my food haul for Sunday morning. As usual, I put all the information up there as to what the retail price would have been and how much I have saved. Today, <coughs> excuse me. Today, I am going to make a variation on a tuna pasta bake. Just to do something a bit different, really. So I had a bunch of these that I bought last year, and this is the last one. Um, but instead of tuna, because I've only got three tins left, I'm going to use some of these mackerel fillets that are in tomato sauce. I'm also going to add a tin of kidney beans because I have a few of these lurking. I'm going to stick in a whole broccoli and some mushrooms and some other veg. Um, I'm going to top it with mozzarella. I, I got a load of mozzarella earlier in the year and I've frozen it in slices. So I'm going to cover the top of it in mozzarella, stick that in the oven to bake. And I'm also going to make a banana cake because I have a few bananas there that really need using. And when they go really soft, they're great for making cakes. The last banana cake I made, I put eggs in and it was it just had that edge to it it was really nice and i've got a lot of eggs in at the moment so i'm going to make that so i'm going to do all that and then you can watch me throw together recipes sunday is a baking day <laughs>
to make my variation on this tuna pasta bake. Um, so I'm just going to do a little run through and then you can see how I do it. I literally just lob things into a bowl. I don't make a big fuss about it. Um, so let's get started. This is the bowl that I'm going to make it in. It's one of my mixing bowls, but this is fine. This will go straight in the oven because it's a casserole dish. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is chop up all the basic ingredients and throw them in there. I'm going to drain these kidney beans. So we have a bit of a dented tin, but I think we'll manage. And then I'm going to drain these into this. Get some running water. I'm saving all my water today for the garden. Although the weather's turned and it's raining a bit, it's not really a huge amount and I really want to fill up my spare buckets. So all of this will be diluted down and then it will go into the garden. So that's that drained and now I'm just going to chop vegetables and we'll get the, the first of the ingredients in. I never take the skins off my potatoes best bit. So I'm going to just dice this into small cubes. Goes there. I'm also going to have a red onion. I put some red onions last week. I've also taken the last of my um, sweet potato out of the freezer. I think that will make a nice addition. That's still a bit frozen, so I'm just going to throw that straight in there. So let's put the first of this in. This bake, hopefully, is a three, four day meal, which is why there's so much of it. I'm also going to chop up Whole broccoli. I think I'm going to put the whole broccoli in. Broccoli. Gosh, is this all going to fit? I might have to get a bigger dish. Have to get a bigger dish. Put my casserole dish, which is deeper. Let's get the rest of that in there to start with. That's that. Throw in the leaves from the broccoli because we don't waste that either. Let's tip this back in here. It's a slightly better fit. Right, let's get the mackerel in. Tip in the 
kidney beans. And let's give this a stir. Try and get everything mixed in properly. Easier said than done. <laughs> this is my slapdash approach to cooking. But it always seems to work for me. So we'll just make sure that we've got some some of this blended together. Now I'm going to make the sauce. Now this is supposed to be three quarters of a pint of milk, but I'm not going to do that. That's a waste of milk. So I'm going to do just under half a milk. that bit of milk and then the rest of it I will do as water. That'd be fine. So what you're supposed to do is put the sauce into a saucepan. Add a little bit of milk make a paste, give it a good old stir, Let's see just blending that up, now mixing the rest of the milk, on the hob. The other thing I'm going to do is I've taken out some of my, mo my mozzarella from the freezer. What you do, you cut it into slices and then you lay it on baking paper and then you freeze it. That's a great way to deal with mozzarella cheese. I also freeze regular cheese, uh, which also freezes fine for recipes and things. You wouldn't want to eat it straight out of the out of the freezer defrosted because it does lose some consistency. But it'll do fine for recipes. And again, waste not, want not. So, I'm going to put the lid on this when it's done before it goes in the free, into the oven, sorry, and give it a long, slow bake. And now I'm going to just pour this all the way over, and then hopefully that will get right down into the recipe. Give that one last stir, looks pretty good. That'll do. And now, just going to lay the mozzarella on top. We'll see how that turns out. <laughs> there we go, lid on. Right, I'm going to put this into the oven, but before I turn the oven on, I'm going to have a little tidy up and I also need to now make banana cake. 
So this recipe is basically the same as my other one, but includes eggs. I must remember to grease my loaf tin. Wipe the margarine all the way around and then we get a little bit of flour and we knock it around until it's stuck to the margarine and that's it. So we'll put that leftovers in there and that's basically your loaf dish ready to go. So what I need first is 8 ounces of flour, uh, 6 ounces of sugar, 6 ounces of sugar, 1 teaspoon of baking powder, like that. 4 ounces of butter, 4 ounces of butter, going to blend the butter into the dry ingredients. do for that. Next I need two eggs. Straight into the mix. Give that a stir around. Get those mixed in. Now I'm going to put the banana. Now the recipe calls for two bananas but I just tend to go with one and you're literally just going to squish it which is why it's better to have an overripe banana they squish better get that stirred right in there and then two tablespoons of milk And there you go, your nice banana mix. I'm going to get this into the loaf tin. Oh, it tastes so good. So banana-y. to the oven with the casserole. Work it up to about 190 and keep going until it's done. And here is the end result the fish bake. A lot more juice in it now. See the juice has come out of the vegetables. Oh tastes so good. This is gonna last for days. I'm gonna enjoy this.
and here is the cake. Always have to eat a piece of this hot straight out the oven. Absolutely amazing this cake. The eggs definitely add to it. It's a much lighter cake, but if you don't want eggs or you can't afford eggs, um, it will work just as well. Spot on. So good.